Hi guys and welcome to another Maths Guru production. My name is Darren, Maths Guru. I know, strange her, huh? but this is part of our general maths for U11 course and uh, it's percentage increase and decrease. If you can, sign up uh, by subscribing to my YouTube channel for my uh, you know 10 subscribers that I have and uh, head over to MathsGuru.com. If you go over there, not only can you find these by chapter and you've got downloadable notes and exam questions and all sorts of stuff coming soon and give me a shout out to your mates. Greatly appreciated. What are we going to do? A percentage increase and decrease. Absolutely. Now this thing people tend to find a little bit complicated. Why are we doing this now? Well, because we're doing all the sort of important stuff at the beginning that we will use to build on later on. So these videos will always be here. They're for you to come back and refer to if you need to. Alternatively, stick stuff in your summary book or go to mathsguru.com and find the notes. You can download everything I write, you are able to download and annotate yourself. Don't just take my word for it, write your own notes as well if needs be. Okay, so we're going to build on, we've already done orders of operation and directed numbers and powers and roots and all these type of things before, but why, oh why do we use percentages? Well, if I got a test score, as I say here, of 45 out of 68, and you got a score of 35 out of 60, who did better? Well, you could argue, well, you did, as in I did. Well, one of us did, because I got 45. That number's higher than 35, isn't it? Well, yes, it is. But as we all know, the first thing you guys do when you get a test is you grab a calculator and that's the time you work out a percentage. Every single one of you knows to do 45 divided by 68 and you times it by 100 and 35 divided by 60 and times by 100. Now, the idea of timesing by 100, that's what's important because believe it or not, here, you're actually turning the fractions into something quite different. You are saying, well, rather than make my answer or my test out of 68, let's make it out of 100 by doing that fudge there, all right? So you are actually using ratios, which is either coming up or has been done before because I'm not doing these videos in order, but anyway, yes? And likewise, 35 out of 60 equals some number out of 100, so let's call that y. And that's how you compare them, because by making the bottom of the fraction the same, we can compare. And you can only compare fractions or quantities if they are the same. You can't compare millimeters and meters, because other than knowing that they're smaller or larger than each other, it doesn't make a huge amount of sense. Now, what's going to come up or is important to this particular part of the course is you are going to be looking at percentage increases and decreases. Now, the ones you see the most often will be things like prices, you know, because we see price increases. You go to the supermarket, you go out shopping, and it's like, ah, oh, big sale, up to 50% off. Do you know what? I have never in my life found anything in a shop 50% off, up to 50% off. I swear it's in one item and it's around the back of the store, yeah? Everything I ever see is like 5% off, yeah? Either, um, anyway, sale up to 70% off. Again, up to 70% off. And why is it now I go to Daiso, which I thought was a $2 store, but now apparently they have stuff more than $2. Hmm, interesting. And then our home price forecast, increases and decreases and money and all that type of stuff. Percentage increases you're gonna deal with. Now, the interesting thing is, as I've said before, by the time you get to year 11, you tend to know the most common percentages. Don't you? Like if I said to you 50% off, you go, well, that's half, half off. Why? Because your brain's wired it that way now. You've remembered that 50% is a half, 25% a quarter, 75% three quarters, yeah? Gets a bit more complicated when there's you know 40% off because you can't quite work that in, in your head. Or can you? Well, I actually posit hmm, that you can. Because one of the best percentages in life that I teach kids to work out is 10% of something, all right? Because 10% is basically one-tenth of it, all right? 10% is one-tenth, and that's the same as dividing it by 10. Now, 50% does not mean you divide by 50. In fact, if you divide by 50, you're in all sorts of trouble, right? But 10% is the only one that when you divide by 10, you actually work out the figure. So what does that mean? Well, if I wanted to do 10% of 200, I take the 200, I divide it by 10, and that gives me 20. ka -ching. Now, again, when you divide by 10, if you remember, you're jumping the decimal point one place to the left. So 200 becomes 20.0, which is 20. What about 10% of 45? All right, so 10% of 45, all right, it was 45, then my decimal point's there, it's jumped one place over, it becomes 4.5. Oh, and what about 10% of 0 0.5? Well, again, we've got 0 
move the decimal place one over, becomes 0 0.05. Now, why is that useful to me? Why is 10% useful to me? Well, because once you know 10%, you can find 20%. How? Because you just double it. If I find 10%, I can find 5%. How? By halving it. Yeah, so I tend to be able to work out percentages in shops, or at least rough percentages, by starting with 10%, because most things I'm ever see, I can divide by 10, okay? All right, now there are lots of ways of being able to do this. I'm gonna show you how I do it in my head, or at least how I start with doing my head, but we'll go back to the calculator, because this is a CAS course, and it's important that you know how to use your calculator. Don't forget your summary book to write this stuff down. So Sally's daily wage of $175, is increased by 15%. And when you're increasing, you're adding something on. So what it's asking me here is to calculate her new daily wage. I need to take her money, work out an increase, add them on. So what I'm trying to do is work out 15% of 175. Well, if I was gonna be doing this, the first thing I would be doing is working out 10%, which is simply 17.5, yes. And then how would I get 15%? Well, I know that 10% plus 5% would give me 15%. So if I now work out 5%, I get 17 and a half of 17 and a half is 8.75. All right, now, how do I get 15%? I add them together. And so 17.5 add 8.75, I am using a CAS at this moment in time, isn't that embarrassing, is 26.25. Five. So what I now know is that her, her daily wage has increased by $26.25. Is that her final wage? No, because what I now need to do, because it wants her new daily wage, does it want to know the increase? It wants to know her new daily wage. I take 175 and I add 26.25 onto that. Let's do 25. Five and that becomes 11, seven, eight, nine, 10, 201 dollars and 25 cents. ka -ching. Thank you very much. Could have chosen a better example to do in my head to actually show you, but anyway, life goes on. Now, let's look at the CAS, all right? And what you'll notice is I've got the CAS screens to try and help me work out the values, but if you <laughs> zoom in, you'll see that 26.25 comes up. Okay, so, to find the percentage of something, and I always think of this as percentage of something, of is times, yes, and percent means divide by 100. That's, I always remember that. So, Sally's daily wage of $175 increased by 15%, calculate her new daily wage. So when we find the percentage we're gonna do, so the change in amount, so in this situation we're looking for the change in money she's gonna get, yeah? So it can be change in distance, or it can be change in time, or change in something. So her change in money is gonna be the percentage, which is given me as 15, divided by 100, times by the original price, and in this situation, the original amount, which is 175. And, zooming into my CAS, if I do 15 divided by 100 times 175, I get 26.25. Now, that's the increase. It is important to realize that that is not her new wage. That's by how much it's gone up. And in the questions, look for the words increase or decrease. That tells you whether you're gonna add it on or take it away. And so, I now go to her money, 175, I add on the 26, 25, and once again, 5, dot 11, 7, 8, 9, 10, I get $201.25. Ka-ching, again, adding it on because it says her money is gonna be increased. Here's another example. A primary school's fun run distance of 2.75 kilometers is decreased by 20%. So the word there I'm interested in is decreased and the percentage of 20%. Okay, so again, have we got an initial amount? Yes, we've got an original amount or price or something. Yep, 2.75, that's where we're starting. Then we're decreasing by 20%. So my change in distance now is gonna be the percentage, which is 20, divided by 100, times my original price, I'm gonna change that to original value at some point, so that I get 2.75. And as if by magic, that little screenshot's changed. Yes, you know, trying to get these videos out and left the wrong screenshot in there. So now, if I zoom in, I notice that 20 divided by 100 times 2.75 gives me 0 0.55. So going back now, because it is a decrease of 0 0.55, I'm gonna take my 2.75, I'm gonna take away 0 0.55, 
which is going to give me 2.2, all right? So my final answer is find the new distance. I would be writing that my new distance was equal to 2.2 and kilometers. It's important that you actually answer the question that they're asking you. Another example, if a shop offers a discount of 15% of items in the sale, what would be the sale price for the pair of jeans? Again, very repetitive, but now we're dealing with sale. They're not said increase or decrease. They're expecting you to realize that when things are on sale, that's a decrease. Language in math is important, yeah? In fact, I'd be very annoyed if I went in and paid more for a sale item than in the real place, but anyway. So, do we have an initial amount? Yes, we do, it's $95. Do I have a discount in percentage? Yes, I do. So my change in amount, in this case it's gonna be change in price, is gonna be 15 divided by 100 times 95. 15 divided by 100 times 95 gives me 14.25. So that means my jeans are gonna be discounted by $14.25. So I'm gonna do 95 minus 14.25, which gives me $80.75. So there we go. Once again, I'd put that in the context of the question if I needed to, and I'd say, well, now the cost of the jeans are in the sale $80.75. Almost finished, but there is another way of thinking about this, which can make it a bit easier for you. Harder if you don't understand it, but easier. And again, there is no right way of doing this. You find the way that works for you. Watch this. If it doesn't make any sense, yeah, don't worry about it. All right. Percentages actually can go above 100%. Now, I tend to think of a percentage as 100%, meaning what I start with. So if I go in and uh, something's on a sale, I think of 100% as the original price. If I then have, for example, a 15% increase, then I know that I have 100 plus 15% of what I started with. So that means the new price is gonna be 115% of what I started with. Notice that I just added the percentages together. It's 115% of my original price. If I, for example, then had a 20% discount, and we'll put the percent sign in there, then I know that my original price was 100. I'm now gonna take away the 20%, which gives me 80% of my original price. And actually, what I'm writing here gives the idea of the formula that we can use to do this, right? So we can look, work out this percentage of my original price. Okay, so going back and repeating the questions now, but doing them in a slightly different way, less calculations. You're actually cutting out a stage of calculation as well, sort of. Sally's wage, oh, good old Sally getting this pay rise. Yep, is $175 is increased by 15%. So I know she starts with 100%. I'm gonna add on 15%, which means she has 115% of what she started with. 115% of what she started with. And because she started with 175, ka-ching. Now, if you've been taught anything about percentages and the word of when you go through school, percent is divided by 100 and of means time. So I can now refactor this or rewrite this as 115 divided by 100 times 175. Zooming in, 115 divided by 100 times 175 gives me 201 and 25. And do you remember what that meant? Oh yes, it was the value we had before. So I don't now add that on to previous values. That is actually my final answer. So Sally is gonna get $201.25. It's just broken down the idea of adding it on. Although I suppose you could argue I've already done that here. Right, what do we do next? So trying the questions using a new method. Okay, so primary school's fun run distance of 2.75 is decreased by 20%. So I started with 100%. I'm decreasing by 20%, which gives me 80% of what I started with. So I've got 80% of what I started with, 2.75. Hold on a moment, I know that percent is the same as divided by 100 of is times 2.75. I've got a mathematical equation, which when zooming in gives me, oh my goodness, 2.2, which I remember from previous. So again, therefore, my distance in one calculation is 2.2 kilometers. I wouldn't add that on or take it away. I've done all of that in this stage here. Last question, let's just check those uh, genes. I wanna make sure that I wasn't doing it incorrect. 
offers a discount of 15%. Ah, the word discount was there, all right? So again, my gene started at 100%. I've discounted by 15%, which gives me 85%. But again, it's 85% of what I started with. So 85% of what I started with, which was $95, 85 divided by 100 times 95 does in fact give me that value of $80.75 ka-ching. I actually have to say I much prefer doing it that way. Last part of the video, I know it's a bit of a long one, but percentage change and percentages is actually really important. It comes up ever such a lot. Find the percentage change. So sometimes we want to actually find the percentage change. We've not been given it. So in the previous question, we were given 15% and 20% and 10% or whatever it was, can't remember. But now we're gonna find the percentage change. We're gonna be given two quantities and find the percentage that has changed. And the best way to do it, ladies and gentlemen, is using a formula, all right? So the formula there says percentage change is equal to change in quantity. So the change in price, the physical change that has taken occur in the price. So if something's dropped from 50 bucks to 20 bucks, that change would be 30 bucks. If something's gone from 100 degrees to 120 degrees, the change would be 20, yeah? So you're looking at the similar things and taking them away. Divided by the original quantity, right? So whatever it started as, and then times by 100. All right, let's see how it works. So I've got the formula, don't worry about it, formula's in every single one. A university increased its total size at the beginning of an academic year by three thousand students. Now, this question's actually told you the change in the quantity. It's told you the number of students has changed by 3,000. So that's one piece of information. If the previous number of students was, now again, previous number means original number. So the previous number was that, well I've got everything I need. So percentage change, change in quantity was 3,000, divided by the original quantity of 3,000, uh, sorry, 35,000, and times by 100. Zooming in to see what my CAS gave me, out came a decimal number. That's okay, it doesn't mean I've done it wrong. How is the hint in the question that I'm looking for a decimal number? Well, when I zoom back out, the question actually says round it to two decimal places. Uh, where does it say to two decimal places? Um, by what percentage correct to two decimal places? There we go. So, therefore, my percentage change is given by 8.5 seven percent and rounding to do decimal places is really really important as in rounding to decimal places at all is important because the examiners will start taking marks away now if you don't round correctly in exams just a warning there another example um calculate the percentage discount obtained when a calculator with a normal price of 38 dollars is sold for 32 dollars mm. now have they given you like the last question they gave you the change this one they haven't they've given you two prices well, that's okay, we can work out the change that has taken place. Why? Well, I just do the original price minus the new price, which is $6. So, do we know the change in quantity we do? We know the change in quantity is $6 divided by the original quantity, the original price. Well, again, we know what the original price was, was $38. And I'm gonna times it by 100, which again, when I put it into my calculator, I'm not gonna zoom this time, does it say, I've got it, so in this situation, it says to the nearest whole percent. So in this situation, it is a 16%, but the question is, is it an increase or a decrease? Well, I would be now writing 16% decrease, just to make sure the examiner is aware that I know the price has gone down, all right? Just always treat the examiner like he's a numbnut. He's got no idea, or she's got no idea. And believe it or not, that's the end of this video. I know it's a long one. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already done so, sign up to massguru.com. Again, there's notes and exam questions and, and these videos. YouTube, let me know you're watching because I'm never going to be rich and never going to be famous. Let your mates know. But otherwise, I'm signing off. Darren Massguru, stay safe and please keep watching. Bye-bye.